Okay, so tonight we have um, our second flipped lesson, and this one is going to be about the grasshopper. On Monday, we are going to dissect the grasshopper, and you'll be able to see the differences between the crawfish and the grasshopper. They're both from phylum arthropoda, but they're in different classes, and they really have um, some distinct differences. So tonight, we're going to be looking at the grasshopper. So I gave you a handout in class on Friday. If you don't have it, if you didn't bring it home with you, be sure to check Edmodo. Uh, for all the handouts for this lecture should be on Edmodo. Okay, uh, I've already provided for you in this lecture a diagram that's already been labeled, so you won't have to sit here and listen to me type or go through misspellings. You'll notice right away in the top portion of this diagram we have the external features and below there's just a shadow of the outside of the grasshopper because we're going to be focusing on the internal organs down below. So up above, you can see that we truly have those three distinct regions for the insect that we've talked about before. We have um, a cephala region, cephalic region, or a head region. Um, you can see that the head region is right here. And then there's a thorax region which is right in here. A lot of the thorax of the grasshopper is covered up by the forewing. And then underneath we have the abdomen right over here. So make sure you label those head, thorax, and abdomen. We also still have an antenna, but you'll notice in the grasshopper these antenna are pretty short. And we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes about the difference between a cricket and a grasshopper. Oftentimes those two organisms are um, compared or, or thought of to be similar, and they are similar, but one of the distinct differences between a, cra a grasshopper and a cricket are their antenna. Grasshoppers have short antenna right here. Now. You probably notice right away this large compound eye right here. Uh, that is used for seeing, but they also have a really tiny simple eye, which is just a real tiny dot right above or right near the base of the antenna. Now, down below, you'll see some little palps. This is this helps them um, with their eating and some other things that are going on. Then, as we kind of make our way around the spiracles, they have spiracles, and we'll notice this when we dissect it on Monday, but they have two in their thorac, thorax region, and then they have eight more in their abdomen, and these are used for breathing. Now, there's another little tiny hole right over here, and we'll notice it when we dissect it. The tympanum, those are their ears. Um, that's another difference for the cricket and the grasshopper. The, it's in a different location. The tympanum is in a different location for the cricket. Okay, we still are labeling some of these little spiracles. You can see some of them in this picture, they're a little, these little white dots that are right along this area. Um, those are the spiracles. And the oviposter right here, this is where they deposit their eggs. And there is a forewing, which is the wing that's on top, and a hind wing, which is on bottom. Uh, you'll notice that they do have uh, three pairs of legs. Here's one right here, and I don't know if those were labeled here, but you might want to just look. Of course, the, a leg is pretty obvious, but they have their jointed legs right here. Uh, so here's the front leg and this leg right here attached to the thorax. Those are the walking legs. So I would add that in, the walking legs. And then this one right here obviously is used for jumping, and we call that the jumping leg. So go ahead and label that as well, jumping leg. Okay, now, down below, I'm not going to have you know all of these parts. So, again, like with the crawfish, I'm going to circle the ones that I want you to know. Um, and then after we label these, there's you will you have a worksheet with this fill in the blank. And those are the main ones that I want you to know. Obviously, I want you to know along the digestive tract, there is a mouth. You can't really see that. Let's see if we can change this color. Okay. The mouth. Then it's going to go into the esophagus, which is right, right past the mouth. But that's not labeled here, but it's labeled in some of your notes. And then it's going to go into the crop, which you're familiar with that from 
the earthworm. And if you remember from the earthworm, right behind the crop is the gizzard. So this large area right here is the gizzard, and I'm not going to make you label that either, but just know that right behind the crop, which is where food is stored, the gizzard, and that's where the gastric juices kind of begin to come into play. Then it has this gastric cica. I do want you to know the, um, the crop and the gastric cica. The gastric cica is involved with um, enzymes that break down the food. Then right behind the gastric cica is the stomach. It is a little bit smaller, as you can see right there. It's smaller than the crop. And then behind that are the Malpighian tubules. Now, the Malpighian tubules, those deal with waste disposal. And as you can see, we're heading from the Malpighian tubules into the intestine. So this is all along the digestive tract. So from Malpighial tubules, right here, these green things, into the intestine. Okay, I do want you to know um, the sex of your grasshopper, and I'll be able to show you more about that when we dissect it. But you may have ovaries and a vagina, or I will show you what testes and gonads look like on the male grasshopper, if that is indeed the one that you get. Um, along in the, uh, back to the digestive, you do have a rectum, I want you to know that, and the very end of the digestive tract, and that is the anus. Okay, now dealing with the circulatory system, you do have a heart. I want you to know the heart. Uh, it's more of a tube, tubular heart, and the only vein-like structure is the aorta. Now, grasshoppers have an open circulatory system, so once it leaves the aorta, it diffuses into the necessary cells. Uh, so that's the circulatory system. Now with the uh, nervous system, we're going to start here with the ganglia. I do want you to know the ganglia, which is connected to the ventral nerve cord. Um, and then uh, I do want you to know for the respiratory system, the air sacs, which receive air from the spicules. So you don't see the spicules from the internal part. Um, so... Uh, and the air sacs do come um, receive air from the tracheal trunks, but trunks right, right here. But I'm not going to make you label that one. So if you could just get the ones that are in blue, I think I've included all of them, but about two. Um, that would be great. Okay, so that's the external and internal part. Again, a lot of this will make a lot more sense when we start um, opening the grasshopper on Monday. We'll do that uh, first thing Monday when you come to class. Okay, so just a few facts. I don't have 15 like I did with the crawfish. Uh, I would recommend writing this down on the back of your diagrams. I think you'll have room there on the back of your diagrams. So first of all, grasshoppers are plant eaters. They are herbivores. Now because they are plant eaters, they can really destroy a crop. And so um, they can be your friend or they can be your foe. So we have to kind of watch out for that. They do have three main methods of defense. They can camouflage. That's their primary method of defense is camouflage. They also are great jumpers. So they can jump um, really fast, pretty short distances. And that is their main method to get away from a predator is to jump. Now, they also have the ability to do a really quick flash of their wings, and that is, that is done to distract their predator so they can then get away. Now, there's something called stridulation. Stridulation. This is that sound that you make when you hear crickets at night or grasshoppers at night. Um, for a grasshopper, they make this sound by rubbing their legs against the wing. And male, it's mainly males that do this, and they do it to attract females. But in some species, females are actually stridulating as well. Now, stridulation is different between crickets and grasshoppers. So we'll, we'll talk about that here on the next slide. But get these four main points down about grasshoppers. Well, now that we're talking about crickets, let's talk about the difference between a grasshopper and a cricket. A grasshopper is going to have short antenna, whereas a cricket will have a long antenna. In fact, some crickets, their antenna is actually longer than their body. 
Grasshoppers, like we mentioned before, are herbivores. But crickets can be herbivores or omnivores. Um, some of them are even seen as predators. And then with stridulation. Stridulation for a grasshopper, they're rubbing their legs against their wings. But for a cricket, they're rubbing their wings against their wings. They're rubbing the forewing against the hind wing. Now, I mentioned earlier that the tympanum is located in a different place between the grasshoppers and the crickets, but I'm not going to require you to know that. Just these three main differences between a, a cricket and a grasshopper. All right, now take up the fill-in-the-blank notes. Um, these are kind of more dealing with the different sy body systems, organ systems, circulatory system, respiratory system, digestive tract, that sort of thing for the grasshopper and kind of defines a few of the more um, unfamiliar parts. So being an insect, it is going to have six legs and it's called an arthropod. And I do want you to remember that arthropod um, is the Greek meaning or the Greek words for jointed feet. For nutrition or their digestive tract, they have a one-way digestive system. It goes in through the mouth, they crush it up, they eat it, it goes all through the whole entire digestive system that we just described just a few minutes ago and out through the anus. This is not like some of the sponges or some of the other things that we've talked about earlier where they only have one hole and what they eat and they excrete from the same orifice. This has a one-way system. They do have specialized mouth parts for cutting and tearing food and we're going to really be able to see those when we dissect it. There also are some salivary glands that help with the gastric cica in breaking down the food. It says here, what is their purpose? It's to digest the food properly. So here is the digestive tract. Now, you should have already labeled all of these parts uh, from the beginning. So take a minute and just label them knowing that these are the digestive tract. Now, what I would really like for you to know from this part is the flow, the order. It starts here at the mouth. The mandible is going to help crush up the food. It goes through the pharynx or through the mouth. It goes into the esophagus. It goes into the crop and the gizzard. The um, gastric cica help to break it down. It goes into the stomach. From the stomach, then it's going to go into the intestines and then out the rectum and the anus. So kind of know this flow of order that we, I think we even did that order with the earthworm. So these are all the digestive tract parts. Uh, maybe on the quiz I might even ask you um, three, uh, all of these are digestive tract organs except for which ones. So be able to identify which ones are part of the digestive tract. Okay, what about transport? This is mainly dealing with um, the transport of blood and oxygen and other things that, that we know to be transported through our blood. Okay, the grasshopper has an open circulatory system, so there's no network of vessels. There is that aortic main kind of artery, but there's no vessels. It does have the tubular heart that kind of all runs along the dorsal side of the um, grasshopper. And it takes the blood into sinuses, which are large cavities where the blood bathes the cells. And then it'll re-enter that aorta through the same series of valves. So this is the circulatory system part. You have the, the tubular heart, the aorta, and then the sinuses, which really helps to deliver the blood where it needs to go. Now, a grasshopper does not have hemoglobin in their blood, so it doesn't carry oxygen. A grasshopper is going to get his oxygen in a totally different manner. The grasshopper is basically hollow inside, and we'll see that when we dissect it. Um, so you're not going to have... Uh, you're, you're gonna, you could have blood kind of going all over the place inside because it's an open system. Okay, how does it get its oxygen? How does it breathe? Well, respiratory gases are not carried in the blood, uh, but they're carried by a tracheal system. And these, this all happens through spiracles, which there are two on the thorax and eight on the abdomen. And these tubes, these trachea tubes, lead to the moist membranes of the body cells. And then there's some air sacs that pump air through the trachea. Now, other than the spiracles, the grasshopper's body is dry and impermeable to liquids, which is good since they're kind of in some moist areas. So is this beneficial considering their environment? 
Absolutely. In fact, the air comes through these spiracles and just goes directly to the cells that's needed, which is a very efficient manner. It doesn't um, have to go through water or through tissue. Um, it's a, a super efficient system for the grasshopper. Okay, so here's just a picture of that. They go through these spiracles right here. Then they go into the air sacs, and then the air sacs pump them into the trachea that takes um, oxygen all throughout the grasshopper. So just note that these three parts are part of the respiratory system for the grasshopper. Okay, now what about the excretion? Um, the only parts that I really want you to know in all this, there's a lot of words on this slide, and by this time I don't even know if you're fast-forwarding or if you're really listening, um, but the only part that I really want you to know are these Malpighian tubules. These are what help take care of the waste and pass it into the intestine where it can then um, leave the grasshopper. So we have the stomach. It goes through the stomach through the Malpighian tubules, or the Malpighian tubules help to get rid of the waste, and then out the rectum. All right, what about the nervous system? The grasshopper does have a central nervous system with peripheral nerves branching off, and it has some highly developed sense receptors in the antenna. It does have a brain, and then it has these little bulges like we saw with the crawfish. Those are ganglion. And it does have a ventral nerve cord that kind of goes along the bottom, the ventral side. And so, like I said, it does have sense receptors um, in their antennas. Uh, they do have um, hearing in their tympanum. So they do have brain and other senses. And finally, how do they move? I think we talked about this on the very first slide. They do have walking legs and then jumping legs. So they have one pair of jumping legs and two pair of walking legs. And then they have wings. And we know that this outer wing is called a forewing and then there's an underwing and that's called the hind wing. All right, I believe that concludes um, all the information about the grasshopper that I want you to know. So make sure you get these notes down and be prepared to answer some simple questions about what we covered tonight. I will see you Monday to dissect the grasshopper. Have a nice evening.